Hi, my friends, and welcome to Story Time for the week of December 6th, 2020. I'm Miss April. I am the youth librarian at Junaid and Hutton Public Library, and I'm bringing you these online story times every week until we can meet together again. If you watched last week, we talked about Christmas, and we're going to talk about Christmas this week, too. This is part two of four Christmas-themed story times. So today, we're going to sing the same two songs we sang last week, so maybe you'll know them this week. And we have a new book to read and a craft that goes with our book. So if you're ready, we're going to do a little clapping. I'm going to stand up for this song because there's some jumping, bending, and twirling to happen in a minute. Are you ready? Don't mind my bumpy camera. Here we go. Let's all do a little clapping. Let's all do a little clapping. Let's all do a little clapping and spread Christmas cheer. And then we're going to jump. Are you ready to jump with me? Let's all do a little jumping. Let's all do a little jumping. Let's all do a little jumping and spread Christmas cheer. And let's bend. Let's all do a little bending. Let's all do a little bending. Let's all do a little bending and spread Christmas cheer. Are you ready to twirl? Let's all do a little twirling. Let's all do a little twirling. Let's all do a little twirling and spread Christmas cheer. <laughs> was that fun for you? That was fun for me. I don't like how shaky this camera is today. I'm very sorry about that. All right. I have a book for you. Do you think, when you think of Christmas, do you think of spiders? I don't either. That's normally a Halloween thing, isn't it? I'm going to pull my camera a little bit closer so you can see me. Yeah. Spiders is a Halloween thing, but this book is called The Christmas Cobwebs by Odds Bodkin. So let's find out what spiders have to do with Christmas. All right. In old Chicago, there once lived a humble cobbler. A cobbler is someone who makes shoes. All day long, the door to his shop swung to and fro as customers came and went with pairs of shoes. To stay warm, he worked by his smoky coal stove, rap-tapping leather with his fine shoemaker's tools. There he is, working in his shop. As Christmas drew near, he called his children to his side to tell them the story of how, before any of them had been born, he and their mother had sailed to America from Germany, deep inside a steamship. And do you remember what it is, the one thing we brought with us to remind us of our old home, he asked. Oh, yes, Papa, yes, the children squealed. You brought the box. Yes, the box, he answered, his eyes twinkling. He climbed the stairs, and in a few moments, he returned with a carved oak box. There he is with his box. Wonder what's in that box. The drawers of the box were lined with soft green felt, and inside them lay brown glass ornaments. I'm sorry, blown glass ornaments. One by one, the cobbler lifted them out. A golden sleigh once owned by his great-grandpa, a slivery I'm sorry, a silvery angel. His wife had won as a girl. A star the couple had cherished since their wedding day and many other ornaments. These ornaments came with us across the sea, the cobbler whispered to as his wife watched. So children, be oh so careful with them. Do not break a single one. They remind us of home. Next week we find a Christmas tree, promised the cobbler. Now off to bed. A beautiful ornament. 
That night, as the family slept upstairs, the coal stove puffed smoke. Inside the stove pipe, a, pipe, a soft crinkling grew louder and louder until it became a fiery roar. Soon the stove pipe glowed red hot. The wallpaper near it began to smoke, then burst into flame. Their shop is catching on fire. Upstairs, the cobbler awakened. I smell smoke. Wake up, wake up, he cried to his wife. Get the children. There's a fire. As the family dashed downstairs, flames growled up the curtains and licked the rafters. The box, cried the cobbler, stopping. I'll get it. Hurry. Raise the alarm. He ran back through the flames, finding the box in a corner in his workshop. He rescued his precious ornaments. They meant so much to him that he braved the fire to get them. Although firefighters soon arrived, and though they fought the fire for hours, they could not save the cobbler's shop. By dawn, everything had burned to ashes. The cobbler stood in the snow, hugging his wife and children. But we are alive with nobody hurt, he said, hiding his sorrow. And look, I have the box. Let's go. Kind neighbors gave them food and warm clothes and a rag bag. Someone said that 20 blocks away at the city's edge, an old abandoned farmer's shack still stood. Clutching the oak box, the cobbler trudged off through the snow with his family. They're off to find a new home. Dust covered everything inside the little shack and cobwebs filled the rafters. An old broom stood in a bare corner by a rusty stove. The cobbler's wife took the broom and began to clean the room. She was just about to sweep the cobwebs away when her husband touched her arm. Please don't take their homes, the cobbler said. Whose homes? asked his wife. The little spiders who live up there, he answered. We lost everything. Those webs are their homes. Let them stay. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Against her better judgment, the cobbler's wife put down her broom. Although the family had heard nothing, up in the rafters, tiny legs scurried this way and that. Tiny eyes gazed down at them. <clears throat> After the children fell asleep, the cobbler and his wife talked quietly. Husband, she said, what will we do? In order to work, I must have new tools, he answered, and now leather, and new leather. <clears throat> but we have nothing, and she began to weep. The cobbler held his wife's hand. That's not so, my love. We have the box. The ornaments are worth a great deal. We can't sell our ornaments, she gasped. But we must. We have the children to care for. He looked over at the oak box. Don't tell them. Not yet. The next day, the cobbler went to town for a handful of money, enough to buy tools and shoe leather. He sold the family's precious ornaments. Yeah. He had to get rid of his beloved ornaments in order to provide for his family. <clears throat> when Christmas Eve came, the cobbler and his children cut a little green fir tree they had found at the edge of the woods. There's their tree. They dragged the tree home and stood it in their bare shack. It's so different here, said one of the children, looking around the room. But our ornaments will remind us of home, said another. Where are they, Papa? <coughs> the cobbler lifted the children into his lap. Well, children, he said, holding them close. We don't have the ornaments any longer. The children looked very surprised. But he went on, we have something much more precious. What is that, Papa? <clears throat> we have each other, he answered. And look, see how beautiful our tree is? Green with just a little bit of melting snow on the branches. See how the candlelight sparkles in the drops? Do you see that? Do you see that? The candlelight sparkling in the drops. 
Those are our ornaments this year. So beautiful. Although he tried to make his children happy, the cobbler felt his own heart breaking. <clears throat> that night as the family slept, the house grew quiet. Then up in the rafters, tiny legs began to scurry this way and that. At the end of a silver thread, a tiny spider dropped down toward the bare tree. Another spider followed, and another, and another, and another. Look at all those spiders crawling toward the tree. <clears throat> Do you see what they're doing? They're filling the tree with cobweb ornaments. On Christmas Day, the cobbler awakened. He whispered to his wife. Together they carried their children, blinking to the tree. Merry Christmas, my little ones, the, co the cobbler whispered, looking up at the rafters. I think these ornaments are for you. The children's eyes grew wide. Yes, go ahead, feel them. The children touched the miraculous ornaments, but be oh so careful, the cobbler said. Do not break a single one, his wife said, smiling. That's right, the cobbler smiled too, hugging his loved ones. These ornaments remind us of home. Which home, Papa? asked the children. What do you think he said? The cobbler gazed at their shimmering tree. This home, children, said the cobbler. They found a new home, and even though they were sad to not have their old ornaments, the spiders spun them new ornaments in their spider webs. I like that. And today, when we make our craft in just a minute, we're going to make our own spider web for our Christmas tree. All right, are you ready to sing our second song? There's a snowflake. All right. It's on my shoulder first, remember? There's a snowflake on my shoulder, my shoulder, my shoulder. There's a snowflake on my shoulder, and it's melting away. Remember? Elbow. Elbow. There's a snowflake on my elbow, my elbow, my elbow. There's a snowflake on my elbow, and it's melting away. And what's this? What's this part? Lean way back. It's my tummy, yeah. There's a snowflake on my tummy, my tummy, my tummy. There's a snowflake on my tummy. And it's melting away. And then, this right here, what's this? It bends on the leg. There's a snowflake on my knee, my knee, my knee. There's a snowflake on my knee. And it's melting away. One more spot. What's it called? Did you say head? Good job. There's a snowflake on my head, my head, my head. There's a snowflake on my head and it's melting away. All right, my friends, are you ready to make our craft for today? I'm going to show you one I've already made so you can see what it looks like completed. But there is my Spider web ornament, and I could poke a hole in it and hang it on my tree, or I could tuck it into my tree. Yes, I could. All you need for your ornament today, coffee filter, glitter. If you need glitter and you live near the library, call me. I will get a packet of glitter ready for you. If you need a coffee filter, I'll have that ready for you as well glue, which I can loan you too, and scissors. Very simple craft day. One, two, three, 
four things. Coffee filter, glitter, glue, scissors. All right, let's move this down. Just so you can see my work. Do you see my coffee filter there? I have a dark piece of paper I'm going to put my coffee filter on so maybe you can see it a little bit better. All right, super simple craft today. I'm going to take my glue. And I'm going to make a plus sign or a cross, if you want to call it that, on my coffee filter. Straight down. And then straight over. All right. Do you see that on my coffee filter? Now I'm going to make an X over cross or across my T. So that I have an asterisk or a basic snowflake design. Do you see my glue? Good. Then, because it's a spider web, I, I'm just going to draw these out a little bit. I'm going to make webs inside. And I'm just attaching each spoke of my asterisk to one another. I will show you that one. Do you see the circle in the middle? And then I'm going to make one on the outside. Yep, yeah, just take your glue and attach each one. I don't know if I can get that to focus enough so that you can see what I'm actually doing. Once you have it all the way around, it'll look like this. And then the very best part starts, the glitter. Glitter is so much fun. <laughs> and it's easy to do. All you do with the glitter, actually I'm a little so you can see my work, is shake it over top of your glue. Yep. Really good shake. I love glitter because it's fun and it's sparkly and it's pretty and it comes in so many different colors. I chose silver so it looks more spider webish and also because I have silver glitter. But if you had white glitter that would work really well or any color that you like would be fine. And then after you spread your glitter can you see how full mine is of glitter? It's very full of glitter. Then you very gently pick up your coffee filter. Very gently. And you get rid of all that excess glitter by shaking it gently. Do you see how sparkly that is? Oh, I just love it. All right. Now, my friends, after you're finished with your spider web, you will need some time to let it dry, okay? And I have the other one for that purpose. <laughs> after it dries, then you can take your scissors and cut around the spider web. Okay, which I did. I did. I just went right in on the coffee filter and cut, cut.
cut cut around my spider web. And then if you choose, you can put a little hole in it and a string and hang it on your tree or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is just to tuck it in right there. Do you see it on my tree? I'll show it to you closer. My Christmas spider web on my tree. There it is. I like it. All right, my friends. It has been nice to see you today and to sing with you and to read a story. I'm so thankful you tuned in. If you made the craft with me today, I would love to see your craft. You can email that to me at april at janaidenlibrary.org. You can post it to our Facebook page or you could bring it to the library and show it to me in person. I would love to see your craft. If you need supplies, give me a call at 740-254-9224. I would be happy to make a packet for you to pick up. And um, if you need books for Christmas break, call me again at 740-254-9224. And I will be... Very thrilled to do a curbside service for you, or you can come in and pick out your own your own books while we're open. And let's see, we will be back in one week to read another story and to sing a couple songs and to do a Christmas craft. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>